Two months in to the OHL, how are you settling in? Uh, I'm feeling great personally. Um, it was uh, it was a good transition being down in Wellington for for two years in junior eight in the OJHL, and uh, I've been feeling you know I've been waiting my time down there to be up here, and finally uh, in my third year of junior hockey, I was able to you know stick with the 67s, and uh, you know what I'm feeling better than ever. I'm feeling really confident, and uh, my billets have a huge part of, of it, uh, bringing the confidence, making me feel at home in Ottawa, uh, even though I'm five hours away from Bradford and. Uh, you know, the builds helped a lot. Uh, the coaching staff, the team uh, has helped me a lot to settle more in uh, my transition to the OHL. So what are the major differences you've noticed transitioning into a league like the Ontario Hockey League? Uh, a lot of it uh, from a goalie perspective is is the speed coming down the wing and obviously the shots. The shots are, you know, a little harder, a little more accurate and uh, compared to when I was in junior A, I mean, uh, you know, there's obviously some good shots in Junior A because since that, that league was more NCAA uh, bound, but for uh, coming to the OHL, it's a little different. You know, a lot of harder shots and, you know, it's a lot faster, but, you know, I, I think I've uh, been keeping up uh, so far. You definitely have been. There's talk now that uh, there's a bit of a goalie battle going on between you and Leo. Um, 20 or so games in, you have been getting a lot of ice time. Uh, what does that mean to you? And uh, does that provide you any kind of motivation that you you are a backup goalie, but not really a backup goalie? No, um, it's uh, myself and Leo. We, we we both know that there's only one net, and we we can't really share it at the the same time. So we we understood, and uh, we understood that it's going to be a tough battle. It's a long season. We're both going to have our ups and downs, and you know I think coach is, is willing to go with the hot hand in whatever given situation there is, um, and. Another thing is we both we both respect each other with you know um, with a lot of respect actually you know I, I respect Leo a lot for for being here for two for his third year now I mean he's made his mark in the league and therefore I'm I'm there to you know back him up and you know give him some confidence but also pick up some 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 things that he uh, uh, might show me some little tricks or whatnot but uh, it's. It's been a good good year so far with uh, my partner, and we're we're looking to uh, you know stop some more pucks throughout the year. Well, he was uh, the backup goalie for Liam Herbst, who was traded away, and he was traded away because Jeff Brown uh, said he wanted to make more room for you. So, what does that do to your confidence? It means a lot. I mean, I uh, being up and down with the team, I've got to meet Herbst and you know Leo throughout the the two years. So I, I you know they're both great guys, both great goaltenders, and they they've shown it in, in past games in, in the league. So. Uh, um, when when I heard that Herbie was traded uh, to Guelph and you know Coach Brown was making room for me, you know it, it gave me a lot of confidence coming into camp. You know wanting to make my mark, knowing that you know I've got a good spot on the team, but you know I got to make sure that I can prove myself uh, for the for the for the year. And uh, so I think I believe I've been I've been doing that, and I you know I really hope they're they're happy with it. You've been quite involved in teaching uh, the little ones in goalie camps. Uh, what's that like? It's I love it. It's it's such a great experience. I worked at goalie camps uh, throughout my my whole summer. Um, you know, helping little goalies that can barely tie up their skates to to clueless parents that don't know anything about you know being a goalie. Mind you, my dad, my dad had nothing to do with being a goaltender. He was a defenseman. So I've uh, I've had it firsthand. But you know what? It means a lot because I remember growing up and going to camps and seeing the the big guys as we was what I used to call them and seeing them and you know their big pads and you know they're all big and they can stop 100 mile slap shots like it's nothing and you know what I, I kind of look at it as in you know I'm one of those guys right now and you know for kids that are looking up for me or looking up to me um, you know I want to give you know I want to show that I was one of them you know to give back to, to goaltenders you know goaltenders are, are as they say a different breed therefore we always we take care of each other so I mean whatever age group or whatever level of goaltending you are you know I like to, to stick together and be, you know, as open as I can to, to helping anybody. So it's kind of like paying it forward, I imagine. When you were smaller, you attended these goalie coaches or goalie practices, and you must have had players that you looked up to. Like players? Or players, goalies, anybody. Who did you look up to? I'm sorry. You keep mentioning that goalies are a special breed, and I was a goalie for soccer. Oh, okay. Totally different, See? but I really was, but I was too short. Um, but no, who who did you look up to, I guess, goaltending-wise, when you were younger, attending these camps? Um, my, see, I, I've had a lot of goalies I've looked up to, but uh, my biggest inspiration growing up was uh, Chris Abaluet from the Montreal Canadiens, a uh, French goalie like myself. And uh, I just, you know, one day I said, to, I said to my parents, I want to be a goalie, and they... 
they, they didn't really approve of it, but it, it finally worked out for me. And uh, he was he was a huge inspiration. I think it was the the cool mask, the cool pads, and obviously playing for the Habs, that was a huge inspiration. And then uh, uh, for a couple of years, I, I've seen you know I've taken a lot of tricks from other goalies like Martin Broder playing the puck and. You know, having a guy like Marc Andre Fleury and his flexibility, you know, trying to take stuff away from that. But uh, I mean, coming coming to now, uh, Carey Price is, is my biggest inspiration at the uh, at the at the moment. So, I, I like that you mentioned uh, the pads and the mask, and we have your mask standing by right here. Let's let's take a look at that. You you're known to have a, quite an interesting mask. Can you can you tell us all about that? Oh, and I see the fleur de lis on the back too yes. as well. Okay. So, you know what? I'll start with the front. Um, so I have. Um, the guy who designed it is from Thunder Bay, from BMFS Designs. Make sure to check him out. So when I was when I first became a goaltender and I first I got my first mask, it was a red Spider-Man, like just all red with the two Spider-Man eyes, and um, and it was made by the company Oli. There and my name, my nickname is Oli the Goalie, so it works out. So I, I dedicated my first painted mask with a Spider-Man on this side, but I mean you always got to put the villain with Venom and Carnage on the other side. And, you know, obviously, you know, I gotta, you gotta put both, uh, both of them. Uh, I have my nickname right at the bottom. Oh, just Oli, O-L-I. I've had numerous uh, O-L-L-I's, but uh, and I got the 6-7 logo here. Now, uh, the back plate's uh, a little more personal. Yeah, it's, it's, so what it is, is I have, you know, three initials um, and a little drawing. So this little drawing here, Funny enough, this is when I was four years older in kindergarten. Uh, this little guy was Spider-Man, so I drew that for my dad for I believe Father's Day or something like that, and he he kept the picture, so I still have he still has a little frame of it, and uh, so I thought you know if I'm gonna have a Spider-Man mask, might as well throw my my good old you know Spider-Man and his little spider uh, attached at the back, and then uh, I have the fleur de lis. Um, I mean, being French Canadian, both my parents are from uh, Rouen, Noranda. Um, and then I have VB, SSU, and DFIU. Um, DFIU is something that my dad has said. It's, it's more of a, a family thing to, to say. It, it's, the meaning behind it is to don't mess up. As, as strange as it sounds, it, it, yeah, no, it's because it, well, it's my, dad, my dad said, uh, you know, at one point he said, you know, I can't really tell you what to do, so you know, just don't mess it up. Just, figure it out, don't mess it up. So I, I, that stuck with uh, my family. And then the SSU was uh, going to a camp, a Team Canada camp, and my mom said, you know, uh, stir the pot. So that, that's the meaning behind it. So it, 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 both of them mean a lot to me, one uh, meaning a lot for my mom and my dad. And then VB is a, a kind of more of a, a you know, different story. It's my, my uncle, he or my godfather, he's a goalie as well. I grew up... Uh, you know, saying that he was going to go to the NHL, he wasn't even close to going. But you know, he was—he's my goalie coach, as I, I like to say, and he owns a car dealership, Vécule Bellumar. So this is what it represents. And I always said that when I, once I get a helmet, I'll put your uh, your car dealership on it. So uh, that's just a shout out to my to my uncle. But uh, other than that, that's about it. Um, it's just a simple mask that you know has a lot of meaning to me. There's obviously a lot of shout outs on there. You're obviously very close with your family, which is so cool. And uh, we'll let them know so they can watch this and they can see all your shout outs. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us for a few minutes. Uh, best of luck to you and the, the rest of the team for the rest of the season. No problem. Thank you very much for having me.